It's no secret, the key to increasing your retail sales is reducing friction for the consumer. If you're top of mind, well-regarded, and easy to access in their time of need, you'll win your audience's consideration. So how do you make it as easy as possible for shoppers to choose your brand? To position yourself to win, you'll need to use a little consumer psychology. Heuristics are cognitive shortcuts that help us sort out the information available to us in order to make better decisions. So much of what we process happens without our conscious awareness. Our brains have gotten very good at quickly deciding what information is relevant in a very saturated world. Heuristics come into play when our ability to think and make choices is challenged. The better we understand the cognitive shortcuts consumers are likely to take in a retail environment, the better we can design marketing and merchandising strategies to support their journey. Here are a few examples of the most common retail relevant heuristics and how they can contribute to a better shopper experience. Why is it so much easier to remember the first and last items on a list compared to everything in the middle? Let's talk about the heuristic of serial positioning. Though psychologists have different theories about why our brains favor the first and final things we see in a series, the phenomenon of primacy and recency tend to leave us less attentive to the information in between. So what does that mean at retail? Serial positioning means that the first and final slots are prime real estate for your ads or products. This explains why end caps are such a coveted space in a planogram. Shoppers are more likely to take notice of the brands that they see at the very end of an aisle or before they head down the next one. Up next, the decoy effect, AKA the heuristic of asymmetric dominance. Now imagine you're in the toothpaste aisle, surrounded by no less than 50 different options, from the 99 cent bargain brand to the $9 brand that claims to give you celebrity white teeth. How do you choose the right product for you? Are you overwhelmed? When confronted with too many choices, our brains usually default to evaluating our options relative to each other, rather than the more complicated context of our personal needs and values. When we have only two products to choose from, most consumers will opt for the more basic, less expensive one. However, add a premium option into the mix and the cheapest option will start to look too cheap. Simply knowing that they have the option to purchase a more expensive or more premium item will drive shoppers up the price continuum at the point of decision. Perhaps the most famous example of the decoy effect at work is the Wendy's triple hamburger. Back when it was first founded, the fast food giant was proud to be the first to offer a public choice between a single and a double patty. <laughs> Unfortunately, the double burger proved to be a bit of a tough sell. To Wendy's customers, it just seemed like way too much food. Rather than remove the double burger, the brand leveraged the decoy effect by introducing an even more intimidating triple burger. This wildly successful strategy had nothing to do with actually selling triple hamburgers, but everything to do with making the double seem comparatively modest. Adding a premium option to your assortment is a tried and true way to change the context in which consumers view your mid-level options and motivate them to upgrade. Next up, anchoring. Anchoring explains how we make purchase decisions while we're overwhelmed by a category, especially ones that are maybe less familiar to us. Most people know what they can expect to pay for everyday items like eggs, milk, and bread. But when it comes to large and especially infrequent purchases like automobiles, home upgrades, it's harder to know when we're really getting a bargain. Our brains deal with excessive decontextualized options by latching onto an anchor to use as a basis for comparison. Our anchor is almost always the first option presented to us. As we evaluate future products, we'll non-consciously regard them as either a better or worse value compared to the first one we saw. The most amazing thing about the anchoring effect is that you can use it to improve your shopper's impression of the value of a product without changing its intrinsic value. Establishing a list price and then introducing a sale or rebate is a great example of this. A shopper who purchases a $2,300 riding lawnmower on sale for $1,900 will probably tell their friends they got a great deal on a $2,300 lawnmower because they're considering the new price or the promotional price compared to the full retail price. The sense that this new deal is an improvement on what they first saw is an established strategy for driving sales. Up next, the halo or horns effect. When we're struggling to make an informed purchase decision, our brains like to start with what we absolutely know. However, we often fail to recognize when the information we're using may or may not be relevant to the purchase decision. The halo effect refers to our tendency to apply our positive or negative associations with things, people, and ideas to anything else associated with those things, people, or ideas. This phenomenon is the reason why brands invest in celebrity endorsements. Some of you around my age might remember Britney Spears' endorsement of Pepsi in the early 2000s. Despite the fact that there's no inherent connection between Britney Spears and Pepsi, 
her endorsement was a massive boon for their sales. Tapping into the things your audience already likes will make your brand instantly more likable. Better yet, once you've established enough positive regard, it's possible to stand in the glow of your own halo. When a brand evokes a positive consumer sentiment, shoppers will come to see its mark as a stamp of approval. This is particularly important when it comes time to grow product lines and expand into new categories. Your audience's love of your brand's take on product A will follow you when you introduce product B. More consumer trust equals less friction and more wins at the point of sale. Want to see how a little consumer psychology can make a big difference in the success of your marketing campaign? Visit our Learning Center and check out our case studies.